Guy with sword versus 50 cops. The date is April 3rd, 1997, and in the city of Seattle, Washington, at around 11 a.m., 911 operators would receive a call that would change the course of history. What happened? Hello, 911, what's your emergency? A... My, my, my cock is fat. Uh, black man, he's carrying something that looks like a samurai oh, sword. Okay, calm down, please don't racial profile. Yeah, I got a samurai sword down there. You sure that ain't my meat? Does he appear to be dangerous? He's just standing there, but everyone's what is your, freaking out. What is your current location? Second and Pike. Okay. Why he sound like an anime character? This nigga sound animated as hell, buddy. Are you okay? I want you to stay on the line. I'm going to alert law enforcement he, of the situation. Just send just help stay now, please. Calm for me, okay? Wait, they say he. Oh, okay. Guy with sword, nigga. Who is? Who are their enemies that you gotta send fifty cops? Nigga, are you dealing with Killer B? Huh? Nigga, this call with Zoro? triggered an 11 hour standoff, which would forever immortalize the name of the Seattle Street Sandman. No, this dude, dude, no, 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 this, no, I, GTA, please make the next one Seattle, because what is this? Blood the he knew again. There's talks about this guy online, but they're from forever ago. So I just thought I'd make a contribution by putting this amazing story in a digestible video format. I was genuinely floored to see that nobody had made a video about this. Because this is insane. Dude, nah, this nigga must have sliced some of his hairline away because that shit looks like the Bermuda Triangle. Like, what is that? That's a pyramid. I've never seen a lineup like that. He making Chargers Gambino look normal, nigga. With nothing but sunglasses and a samurai sword to his name. This man held off an army of police officers for 11 hours. He withstood everything from getting sh to receiving a bribe in the form of a Big Mac. Who the f and just. Oh, nigga, a Big Mac, I'm stopping instantly. What? Stood there. His name is Tony Allison. But on this day, he insisted that everybody, including the police, refer Call to him, him as Apollo. And it all started with him. Doing nothing. Yeah, it didn't actually start with that 911 call. That was fake. Uh, surprise. It was actually an off duty police officer, and he was alerted about a man in camo pants and a leather jacket that was quote unquote disturbing. So this off duty police officer decides to follow him from Pike's Place Market to the. Yo, chat, they better watch out because all it takes is for him to do this position right here. Nigga, if he if he brings the sword, nigga, if he if if he do that little the little animation where they go, oh yeah, buddy, that's thirty cops down right there, bro. So I would say tread lightly, nigga. Corner of second in pipe. Joe, bro, you're off duty. Try hard much? Anyways, this is where you see him in the video. Now, Apollo was suspicious of this guy following him, and rightfully so. I would be as well. So he took what the cop describes as a defensive stance with his sword at the ready, which is understandable in a defense situation like this but one. But sadly, that was enough for the off-duty cop to call his buddies. And they would remain in that same location for the next 11 hours. They closed- 11 hours? Nigga, is, he, how, is his legs okay? How do you stand on the same shit? How do you stand on? How do you stand in the same place for eleven hours? This oh, that's supposed. Hey man, he might be Apollo for real. All the stores evacuated everybody, shut down. No all wonder why they bribed this nigga with a Big Mac. All the streets caused traffic jams. In case you guys are wondering whether he's actually dangerous with a sword, the news report made sure to seek out a trustworthy source. Shut the man. No, that's racist. Hold on, let me call Halal. Let me ask him if he thinks he's a good swordsman. No, but I like still that's kind of why would you ask the Asian man? It confirms authorities worst fears. Uh, yeah, he knows how to use the sword. When the cops got there, apparently they tried to bribe the samurai sword out of his hand with a glorious sum of $50. I want you to take one look at this guy and guess how he responded. Defensive stance. No, but actually verbally he didn't say anything for the entire 11 hour standoff except mentioning he had brothers in china and russia and correcting police officers when they wouldn't refer to him as apollo he also said that he was possessed by demons and wanted to kill them yeah nah i could no your, your lineup was the first thing that got possessed by a demon because that shit is terrible he talked about uh, uh satan he talked about his brothers in russia and china but he never really engaged the uh, negotiator
But yeah, he just refused to drop the sword. I don't know, I, I couldn't imagine why. However, the police did not give up here. Now they went back to the drawing board and came up with another offer. Now, I can't make this shit. Hey, it's your McDonald's Big Mac, you've got a taste. They offered him a Big Mac. No, I'm serious, this is real. They offered him McDonald's. Because 11 hours, of course you're gonna get hungry. Since he was unmoved by this, he must have a mental health history. So they tried triggering schizophrenic. Oh yeah, 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 you're not accepting uh, a Big Mac? Buddy, you must be, <laughs> you must be, I don't want to say it. You must be autistic. Urges. Of course, he was unmoved by these childish tricks and continued to stand his ground. So the police weren't sure what to do next since he wasn't attacking anybody. But they had to get the sword out of his hand. They thought about throwing a net over him. They shot him with tranquilizer darts, which had no effect. They also shot him with those riot pellets, those little bean bags. Now, I don't know if you guys remember that scene in Jackass where they shot Johnny Knoxville with one of these things. It's considered less lethal. Okay. He was on the ground panting for like 20 minutes. Look, he just shrugs it off. Anyways, two unfair nut shots later, he was still standing. But he endures round after round and shows- No, he's an L Samurai, nigga. He would have cut the bullets if he was real. No sign of surrender. So then they decided the best route to take is to tear gas him. The man shakes off the tear gas with almost superhuman strength. Spray him with a fire hose. Hoping that he will lose Yo, his grip on the chill. sword. But that doesn't work. They turn the water pressure up full blast and then pin him down with a ladder those guys went down by the book exactly what they were supposed to do oh pfft. yeah of course i'm pretty sure this is the definition of by the book actually now when you look at this from the outside who is in the wrong here guns with special beam honestly bro is it like that at least y'all could tell that the man was not suicidal you know what i'm trying to say in gta like he was if anything he was trying to face it all so y'all could have been like tased him or some shit and he would have fell to the floor is, is, is spraying him with water not just a bit OD? Bags that strike with the same impact as a heavyweight boxer's punch. Chemical agents or tear gas makes the suspect very uncomfortable. It burns his eyes, it burns his skin, and it makes it difficult for him to breathe. The jets of water pack the force of a hurricane wound. Then, in a highly orchestrated maneuver, police pin the suspect down with a ladder, pole, and riot sheet. By the Damn. book, exactly what they were supposed to do. Damn. Yeah, I yeah, I agree. I don't know. Yeah, you yeah, well, yeah, no yeah, mind. yeah. No, no, no. By the book. By the book, it all the book also tells you to get the biggest silver ladder you have and, and make sure you yeah, you, you push them. Okay. Opinion. What do you guys think? Would you consider this excessive force? Let me know in the comments. You might think this man's had enough. But the tragedy of Tony Apollo Allison's story is not what? As it turns out, only a year prior to the sword incident, Tony Apollo Allison was released from Western State Hospital Damn. after finishing a 10-year sentence from a charge in which he pled not guilty due to insanity. A charge Damn. of second-degree assault with intent to before. Next time, stop. Don't use water. Use fire. Nigga. Use fire. For this incident, he was an alcoholic wandering the streets with a sword on his back. And now he's a man with his name engraved in history. He was later sent back to Western State Hospital. However, his current whereabouts are unknown. Until now, in a twist of events, I think I might have just found him, or at least some potential evidence he's still out protecting the city. Back in 2021, a dad was with his son at Bitter Lake Playfield, and while okay. passing by a homeless encampment, spotted this distinct shiny object sticking Is out. Is it of the, the same debris. sword? The location of this park happens to be about 50 Yo. miles away from Western State Hospital, or a mere 8.2 miles away from where this whole thing began. Now, due to Apollo's story being very old and many Damn. news sources doing very minuscule amounts of deep diving What's and up? just very little information in general, I had to resort to these two blog posts excessively. This one's got a really neat website, so go check it out. Got a lot of neat posts. Interesting. Great video. To, um, to all those cops, a little excessive, but hey, I'm glad everything, you know, everything was solved without any, anyone getting injured, so that's always a good thing. If you're watching YouTube, join us on Discord, catch us on Twitch, all that good stuff, man. Waxer for life. Love y'all, and peace.